Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Laura and I just filmed this entire video without realizing that my microphone was off. So I'm gonna take another stab at it. Um, hopefully I remember to include all the same things as I did the last time. So you're seeing round two. Uh, so here goes, I went to a market and I found some really cool vintage stuff that I'm excited about and I want to put it out on the internet to either learn more information about the items that I got because the people that I purchased them from didn't really have a lot of information to give me. I'm only able to find what I researched and found on Google. So if you have any additional information about these items that I'm gonna show you today, please leave it in the comments below. I'm very interested in knowing like the exact years that these items came from. I'm able to, you know, give a rough idea of when these items were introduced or made. But if you know more information, let me know, please. Before we get started, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel. It really helps to make sure that more people see my videos and that makes me very happy. So if you like this video, subscribe and give it a thumbs up definitely leave a comment because I want to know more information about these things I got. I'm going to show them to you. I'm going to tell you the years that they're likely made in and the price that I was able to get them for. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, you guys, the first item that I'm gonna show you is arguably like one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And it's this vintage Pamex opera glasses set. You open it up just by pressing this little tab on the back and it looks like this. How cool is that? These are likely from the late 1950s to early 1960s. They were made in Japan, as I understand, and it says right on the front here, there's a coated lens. You're able to adjust the focus by that little uh, wheel. And these are just in absolutely excellent condition. They still work, which is even better. I just love these so much. They look amazing on display and I just imagine, you know, the next time that I go to the opera, I'll be able to bring these with me and make sure that I'm able to see everything very, very clearly. I love these so much and uh, yeah, I got them for $10. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it feels really good to me. I'm really excited about these and yeah, if you have any other information about them, let me know. I just think they're the coolest thing. <laughs> I like can't stop smiling when I look at them. Okay, so the next item that I got is this Old Chum Smoking Tobacco Tin. This was made in Montreal in Canada. So it feels, you know, nice and close to home. Um, this is likely from the 1950s, although it could be a little bit older than that. It's actually in pretty good condition. There's a little bit of rust and a little bit of paint that's missing from this tin, but I have like a huge affinity for vintage tins. I know I'm not the only one, but I don't know where this stemmed from. I just started collecting old tins and now I just feel like I can't stop. I love this, especially because you just don't see things like this anymore. I mean, I don't even know really anybody who smokes period, let alone like smoking tobacco. I just think it's awesome to, you know, have a tin <laughs> for this. And yeah, like I said, in pretty good condition. I scooped this up for $15. Um, the guy that I bought it from, uh, his table that he had set up was definitely a lot more expensive. And a lot of the items that he had, it kind of felt like they were priced higher than other vintage tables. So, you know, maybe the reason for that is just because he had to pay a higher price for them. But I mean, how can you go wrong with the best sun-cured Virginia tobacco? Like, you can't go wrong with that. So very excited about this. It looks awesome on my little like antique display. And yeah, I love it. Okay, <laughs> the next item that I'm about to show you was not only very cheap, 
but it might be like the coolest thing that I got. I'm especially excited because I can't wait to show my husband. He's gonna like have a freak out about this. This is a vintage magnetic wooden train set. <laughs> what? I am so excited about this. I wasn't able to find this exact uh, set online anywhere because it doesn't say any names. The man who sold it to me did say that it was made in Germany, which might, you know, be why I'm not really able to like readily find it on Google. But this is likely from the 1960s to 1970s. It's in great condition. I'll just pull a couple of the little uh, ones apart just to show you. And they're just magnetic like that. So cute. The paint is also in really good condition as well. And you won't believe it. I got this for $5. Like, I don't even know how that happened. Those are the other two. Not only does it look great on display, but it would also be perfect for like when we have kids and our kids can play with this adorable little like magnetic train set. <laughs> I'm just absolutely obsessed with it. It does look like there's room for some more on the other end because there's a magnetic end here, but not on that side. So if I find other ones that, you know, look like they're from the same set, I could get those and, you know, keep on building this train up. I can't believe this was only $5 and the only thing that's wrong with it, it looks like on one of the wheels, the little like um, metal part, here is missing but that's it and I'm not too worried about it like that's fine with me I'll just make sure you don't see it <laughs> on that end I'll turn it around the other way when it's on display so yeah love this wooden train set if you have more information about it you know what to do okay so the next item that I got I really really wish that I had more information on but I kind of got this as like a last stop before I was leaving and the woman that I bought it from didn't have any additional information about it. She really had no idea what it even was <laughs> until I was like, I think I know what that is. So this is a Anchor Seahorse Ship's Lantern. Um, it's made of brass and copper. It says actually on the inside, the only reason why I know where it was made is because right here on the inside, on this little thing, it says made in England. So I'm not really sure if you can see that, but this little guy is in pretty good condition. I think the, you know, rust that's on it just adds to its character. On the top it has the little logo and the trademark there, seahorse trademark. So yeah, I really wish I knew more information about this little guy, how old it might be. Um, I'd really love to know that. Just looking it up on Google, I did find one that's being sold on eBay and it says it's from the 1950s. It feels like it could be a lot older than that. So I'd be super curious to know exactly how old it is. I. Uh, and pleased to say that I got this for $10. I don't know, that feels like a pretty good price to me because a lot of the times that um, I've seen vintage or antique lanterns, they're always like really, really expensive. I think it's just that the woman that was selling it to me didn't know that it was a lantern. <laughs> when I went up to her, I was like, oh, what's this? She was like, I have no idea. I just bought it from some guy. And I was like, I, I think that might be a lantern. <laughs> and she was like, oh, maybe. I don't know. So it looks like the only way that you open it up is on the bottom. I'm not really sure if that's like a typical thing, but there's no other way to open it, like top or top or like, you know, by screwing it or anything like that. But I love this lantern so much already. It fits in perfectly with my little like display that I've got going on. All right, and the last item that I purchased is actually the oldest antique that I got at the flea market, and it is a Royal Crest Red Wine Jordan Wine Company bottle. <laughs> so it comes from Jordan, Ontario, which is in Canada. 
love that. Um, it says it's made by the makers of Brandon, which was like an old company. This bottle is in really, really amazing condition. Um, you just like, you don't see things being made like this anymore. Like, I don't know. Wine and liquor bottles, they just like do not put as much effort into at all. So even the label's in really good condition. It's not too scratched up. Um, looks like, you know, there's like some blemishes around it, but like nothing too, too serious. This is from the 1930s, I believe, just from looking it up. Um, of course, like I've mentioned a million times before, I'd love to know like exact dates if possible. I'm surprised that it doesn't actually say like a year on this bottle, but it doesn't. Um, this also just cost me $10. So I, I just think it like looks so cool. The label itself is really interesting. Um, I love like the antique decals. Uh, all along the the glass bottle and like all the other items that I got it really just like fits in perfectly with my display that I'm starting so guys there you have it those are my antique finds of the day uh, I hope that you enjoyed this style of video um, trying to take a stab at kind of making some more like laid-back videos just about things that I want to talk about Normally on this channel, I talk about things like slow living, digital minimalism, um, and general emotions, but I kind of wanted to just like sprinkle in some of my um, interests and creative hobbies as well. And collecting antiques is something I'm definitely interested in, always have been, but I'm only really just now sort of like starting to do it and I'm very excited. So like I've mentioned before, please let me know if you have any more insight or information on any of the products that I got. The people that I bought them from, like I said, didn't really know much at all. So what I mentioned in this video is only what I, I was able to find on Google. So I'm definitely open to being completely wrong in any of the information that I gave. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and please consider subscribing because it helps for more people to see my videos and in turn will help to support the growth of my channel and I would really appreciate it. I hope you like this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.